Hi, I'm Megan, and in case you missed it, I was diagnosed with colon cancer in March of 2018. I'm all better now. The whole experience was really beautiful in certain ways, and also the worst thing ever in a lot of other ways. That's why I'm committing myself to living a much healthier lifestyle in order to try to help prevent getting cancer in the future. When I was diagnosed, everything in my life changed. Now I'm volunteering to once again shift every important aspect of my life. Everything I eat and drink, my entire physical lifestyle, even my sleep schedule. Making a giant life change is not easy, but right now it feels like the only option and I'm ready to do it. The whole point of this isn't to have some insane outside physical transformation. It's not about how great my arms look though that was a nice side effect. It's more about the internal transformation. When I began, I had two months of chemo left. I had just shaved off all of my hair and my oncologist told me that working out would help me get through chemo easier and bounce back faster afterward. So I saw a trainer to the stars and now me, Steve Zim. Hi, Steve Zim. I am the owner of a Tighter U Fitness Studio here in Culver City, California. When we're doing chemo, it's not just mental, it's really physical. It beats you up, mm -hmm. but we have to fight back by building up your body, making it stronger, do the weights, we do the cardio, we do abs, we do stretching. My oncologist has been saying from the beginning, you need to be exercising. I can't imagine doing an actual workout on treatment weeks, even though I know mm -hmm. it will help me. It's I don't know if I'm capable. Oh. I, I'm nervous I'm not gonna be able to push through it, basically. Hey, we do what we can do. Oftentimes now, just going up a small flight of stairs is exhausting. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to be here. That's the idea, get you back and better than you were before. And that's, Sounds legit. Let's yeah. go work out. Okay, do it. was the first workout. I think I have a streak of perfectionism in me. I learn what it's gonna take to complete a goal of mine. And some part of me expects myself to just do it, just go do it, because I believe I can do it. But it's like I don't account for the reality of making an entire lifestyle change. <laughs> and it leaves me really disappointed in myself and overwhelmed when I can't just do it like that. Which is silly, because who makes an entire lifestyle change? Literally, not even overnight. <laughs> it's not even overnight yet. It's been five hours. It's one thing to set a goal, but there are so many steps in between setting a goal and getting there. And that's okay, that's just the reality, but it's more than just believing you can do it and doing it, you know? It's like a, a whole series of little changes that you just have to work through. I'm making the best food decisions that I can for tonight without totally overwhelming myself. And the rest will come later <laughs> when I'm ready. 6.15 the next morning. And I'm ready for my second workout. Steve said he didn't even recognize me on the elliptical in the beginning because my arms and my shoulders and my back are already, I can't, I don't, I don't know how to flex. They're already like getting more defined. So that feels great. Oh my God, look, like that was not there before. It's 5.30 in the morning. It's been two or three weeks since I've been to the gym. I had my last chemo session. It was Thanksgiving. Those are my excuses. Now that Thanksgiving's over and chemo's over, it's like go time. So I'm ready to get in there and do the damn thing. Bo, get off the couch. He's biting into it like a freak. What's wrong with you? It's been a good three weeks off. The holidays happened, and then I got the port out, and tomorrow morning is the start of me getting back into this program. All I need to think about is getting some good sleep because I'm back at the gym at 7 a.m. tomorrow.
Whoa! Congrats! I did it, you guys! Wow, I just feel so strong and confident, which is really special because I've just spent a year feeling really weak. When Steve showed me that plank position, I was like, I don't know if I'm even gonna be able to get into that position and like hold myself up. And then I killed it. I'm ready to like go from 60 to 80 miles per hour. It's not that fast. The time has come, you guys. I'm feeling stronger and healthier. It's time to see a nutritionist. This is a very scary, overwhelming step for me. I have a Skype consultation with this nutritionist who's gonna go into a lot more detail into my body and what I should be eating. I'm trying to remind myself going into this. You will not overwhelm yourself with all of this information. It doesn't all have to be done and implemented that freaking day. Take smaller bites, okay? Megan, future Megan, you know what I mean, right? People out there, you know, have you ever tried making a lifestyle change and like you just go so freaking hard and then you just get overwhelmed and you totally abandon it. So we all have to just take smaller, more manageable bites. And that's the plan. All right, guys, I'm about to have the Skype consultation with the nutritionist. See you on the other side. <sighs> that was really overwhelming. It was a whole hour of like, a lot of information, so I'm just gonna go process it because I'm already panicking. <sighs> so a while before I saw the nutritionist, I had seen the integrative oncologist who referred me to the nutritionist. I had ordered a lot of supplements and stuff during chemo that I was gonna take to make me feel better, but it was so, so overwhelming that it just made me feel worse kind of internally and it just like wasn't worth the extra added stress. After meeting with the nutritionist, she's kind of reiterated that I should be taking these things or at least doing the best that I can. This is where I stored all of the pills and supplements and powders, paleo greens, fiber, coconut oil, glutamine, carnitine, tartrate, mushroom immune max. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. It's a lot, you know, like that's a lot to take on, especially during chemo. You know, I have everything I need to make these shakes. So I might as well get back into that. I made a couple before I gave up on it. It's not tasty, but it's meant to save you from cancer. So that's more important than it being tasty. We're sizzling, we're frying, and we have the vegetables. Fake chicken, vegetables. We are healthy people. More oil. Here's dinner. Does it satisfy the list of foods that I should be avoiding? No, there's a carb, there's soy, but change happens in small ways. A month ago, I wouldn't have added vegetables to this. I just would have eaten the chicken and the pasta. We did good. Next time we'll do better. And that's what it's all about. It's my last morning waking up and going to the gym at 6.30 a.m. I mean, it won't literally be the last time I ever go to the gym in the morning, but it's my last morning training session with Steve. We've been doing this for so long, so it's kind of bittersweet, but I'm stronger and I'm ready to run. Look who's got a tricep line. How'd I do? You did amazing. You really changed the way chemo felt for me, which is a giant deal, obviously, and then just the way that I feel about myself afterward. There are very few things in life that can make you feel weaker than chemotherapy does, and I've never felt stronger, and that's because of you, so thank you. Yay, thank you. Today might have been my last official workout with Steve, but I know that the change isn't over. It'll probably continue for the rest of my life, honestly. I'll always be making little adjustments and trying to be better and slipping back. And I think that's the only sustainable way for me to make a big life change. I already know that I've come a really long way and for that I'm really grateful. So if you're trying to make a big life change, don't expect it to happen overnight. Just take it one day at a time and know that you will get there eventually. And don't beat yourself up when it goes wrong because that is just part of the process.